I'm Dale Ziegenfelder. I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio. I always liked organ. Uh, it was a hobby of mine from being a teenager. Basically, I got into it. Um, I heard uh, of a person in Cincinnati that had one in his house, so I got his phone number. It was unlisted and invited myself over and uh, saw what he did. Um, he put a two-story addition on the end of his house and took the theater organ from the Paramount Theater and moved it into his house. So I'm not an organ player in practice. Uh, I'm, well, I'm an organ player in practice, but I don't play publicly all that much. I substitute for a few friends, uh, organist friends of mine at churches occasionally. And I've given a few recitals here and there, um, but I don't necessarily go out of my way to play publicly. I mostly just play for myself. I've played at churches. I've done a few recitals here and there. Uh, I'm not uh, real uh, adventurous about playing in public recitals and stuff. I mostly like to just play for myself, but I've done that on occasion. It takes a little bit of extra work to get something actually concert ready versus just having fun playing it myself. I play mostly classical music. Um, I grew up when I was a kid, I, I learned on popular music, um pa, -pa stuff, um, kind of got bored with that. And then I started getting into classical music in high school um, when I started hearing some pretty cool sounding organ music uh, from a real pipe organ instead of an electronic one, which I had when I was a kid. I've written a couple of things um, here and there, but I'm not a major composer by any means. Growing up in Cincinnati, I went to school in Indiana for engineering, electrical engineering. Um, so then I was looking for a job, obviously, and I uh, got a job with IBM here in Kingston. Uh, I was an electronics engineer, a design engineer for IBM. I designed the chips for the computers basically, and then played the organ at night whenever I could get into a church. <laughs> From when I was a kid, I always enjoyed building things. Um, so this was sort of an extension of that. Same with my job at IBM. It was uh, making a, a product that worked, taking electronics uh, in a small chip and uh, designing the function inside to make something work. Um, so the two sort of work together um, and to that extent. So um, here's a call a gems horn. Uh, we have a flute. Uh, back up here, I've got a trumpet. An oboe. This is called a Vox Humana. It's um, supposed to imitate the human voice. So the time it took me to install it was totally 12 and a half years. Um, that involved re-leathering everything, uh, or most everything. Uh, each pipe has a piece of leather associated with the mechanism that opens the air passage to let the, the wind in. So I've got um, a little over 2,000 pipes. Um, so it was a little bit of work doing that. So I found the organ uh, through a trade magazine. Um, if you want to sell your pipe organ, you advertise in this trade magazine. So I looked at a lot of junk, um, but I found one that sounded pretty good. It was in Davenport, Iowa. Um, so I talked to the uh, rector of the church. It was at a church. Uh, and got a copy of the stop list and it looked pretty good on the stop list and it was also playing at the time which was uh, another big thing in its favor so i went out with a suitcase full of tools and a one-way airplane ticket and came back in a big truck a couple weeks later <laughs> well i played it bef i played it before i took it apart <laughs> um, and it was basically playable which was a pretty big criteria. Like I said, I looked at a lot of stuff that was in storage and could be junk, you didn't know. 
Um, so it needed some work, um, which is what I did to it um, after I got it back here. Um, building the swell shades here was another fairly major project that was like two years worth of uh, woodworking and stuff. And again, I'm working full time uh, at a job plus other income things I was doing. Um, so I didn't have full time to work on things. The wiring took a couple of years. Uh, the re-leathering took a couple of years. I lost some time on other income activities. Um, set, setting it up, cleaning the pipes, um, getting another blower. Um, I left the original blower back at the church. It was this great big huge thing. It was an old three-phase motor. I didn't have three-phase in the house, um, so I just, and it, it didn't fit in the truck. So I uh, just left it there. I would have had to spend a whole day repacking the truck to try to squeeze it in. Uh, so I just left it there and then one of my trips to Cincinnati, one of my organist friends said, hey, you want a free blower? So I said, sure, why not? The uh, steps that you had to, I had to do uh, was initially prepare the wind chests uh, by re-leathering all the leather pieces in them um, and then setting them up in the proper position um, so that I could uh, get the wind lines to them uh, and then finally wire it uh, and you know, install new swell shades. The original ones were opaque and I wanted people to be able to see in. So I've got plexiglass now and uh, special wood frames. I had to make all the frames and everything. Uh, and then finally the wiring uh, took a long time. Uh, cleaning the pipes. Uh, I had some dents and things, uh, a little bit of pipe repair here and there. Uh, setting everything up and then tuning it. Uh, the big problem is tuning is it goes out of tune pretty quickly. So you, you hit this trade-off between how much am I going to play it versus how much time do I spend tuning it and, and what's my tolerance for it being out of tune. Um, right now because of COVID, uh, my friend that comes over and helps me tune, he hasn't been able to come so it's pretty out of tune. <laughs> um, I've gone down and uh, tuned a couple things myself that were really bad, but it helps to have somebody at the console holding the note while you're down tuning. Otherwise, it's a lot of trips up and down the stairs. But I try to play a little bit every day. Um, it keeps my fingers in shape. I can, I can tell when I haven't played for a day um, that I haven't played. And uh, more days than that, it's even worse. So, uh, it just helps keeping everything in shape. Um, I have you know, a repertoire that I need to play every once in a while, otherwise I lose it. Um, so it, doesn't, it takes a little while to recover if you let it slide. So I try to go every day and play something. Um, if I'm working on a new piece like I am now, um, then that gets more attention and some other things slide. So um, I could put as much time as I have as I could get into it if I didn't have other distractions. 